my hands in my doing, my lips in my saying. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. All right, so a motto of the church army is to preach or die at a moment's notice. Well, I hope I won't be dying this morning, so I will, you know, preach and give the word that has been laid on my heart. Amen. All right, so good morning, brothers and sisters. <laughs> the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And today is a beautiful day, wouldn't you say? Yes. Would you have said this if the day was overcast? Yes. Would you say, all right. You know, because we normally refer to a beautiful day as a day with golden sunshine. Or would you say that the day was beautiful if coming to church you were stuck in traffic? Yes, it would still be a beautiful day. All right, and some may say even though it's raining, cats and dogs, you know, traffic, nothing would change the fact, and you guys are attesting to that, nothing would change the fact that it's a beautiful day. And, you know, even this morning, a child, well, two children came up and read. So it's especially beautiful to, you know, those parents and as a church to watch those who have grown up in the church, and on this Mother's Day, you know, reading and, you know, spreading the word with you. So for that reason, I'm sure as well that it's a beautiful day. Beauty is in the high eye of the beholder. You know, when I was young, I was always told that I had beautiful feet. That's what I was told, and beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So, you know, anywhere I went, you know, my feet was always covered up. Even if I had to wear slippers, my attire included slippers and socks. No matter where I was going, whether beach, youth meeting, and yes, even church, my feet was covered up. And thank God I have grown out of that stage. And even with the turmoil endured and I played volleyball, so jumping up and down, my feet looked beautiful to me, even with all of that practice. And I know for Mother's Day, and again, just wishing you all a happy Mother's Day to the mothers in the church. For Mother's Day, I know that you know, part of the treatment would be possibly getting you know, your feet done at a spa. You, know, you beautify your feet. And I'm not Muta Baruka. I'm not opposed to shoes. But this morning, I want to highlight the beauty of feet. And I can't think of a better way to do that than to take the proverbial walk with Jesus and meditate on the significance and symbolism of his feet throughout his life. And I know that you have an awesome tech team here, so I'll just say the scripture, and then like magic, it will appear (laughs) behind me. So Matthew 2, verse 11, that's No magic. All right. Matthew 2, verse 11. And when they were, and when they were come, to, come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. See? Magic. <laughs> so here we can appreciate that even at infancy, before Jesus could even walk, baby Jesus had beautiful feet. The mere occurrence of his birth was itself a testimony, a fulfillment of the Old Testament scripture, Isaiah 9, verse 6, that says, For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given. You know, important to notify that today is also Children's Sunday, and we have seen the importance and the gift of children. Jesus' birth literally personified the spreading of good tidings and the good news. News that was so far-reaching that wise men from far away made their way to him bearing gifts. However, before they presented the gifts to baby Jesus, what did they do? I'm hearing it whispered. Say it Lord, like a confident man. They bowed down, fell at his feet, 
and worship him. And that is the true essence of worship. Right, brothers and sisters? Honoring Jesus simply for who he is. Not expectant of anything, just submitting to his majesty. Baby Jesus can't walk, him can't talk, yet he's worshipped for his sovereignty and lordship, among other things. So this morning, I want you to remember that being at his feet necessitates our worship. All right, take team ready for the magic again. Luke 8, verse 41. <coughs> Luke 8, verse 41. And behold, there came a man named Jairus. Anybody know that story? Jairus? Okay, so we don't need a tech team to put it up. It's there, all right. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. It feels like Jairus, we should know who to go to and where to go to for healing and restoration. Again, mothers, you know, healing and restoration, it's awesome job, you know, restoration and healing is not necessarily found at the spa, it's not necessarily found at a quiet house when the kids are outside. Healing and restoration comes at the feet of Jesus. And note Jairus' posture of submission when asking for Jesus to heal his daughter. Amazing and seemingly impossible things can happen when we place ourselves at Jesus' feet. So if you want to experience any true healing, any significant change, any victory in battle, we have to fight on our knees and on the feet of Jesus. There and only there can we be sure of a miracle. Recall that Jairus was a synagogue leader who was responsible for many different things throughout the church. So it was unusual and unprecedented for him to fall at the feet of a preacher. I know Khalil is at my feet. <laughs> see, see, I told you guys that I had beautiful feet, and I hope you, you believe me now. So this morning, I want you to remember, like Jairus, being at Jesus' feet was an act of humility and respecting Jesus' authority. And however, Jesus' authority wasn't limited to just flesh and mortal. His feet knew no bounds. It reads in Luke 8, verse 28, When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the Most High? I beg you, don't torture me. You know who was saying this? The demons recognized Jesus and his authority immediately. They knew who Jesus was and what his great power could do to them. And finally, I'll share with you in Mark 5, verse 33. Then the woman knowing, not yet, then the woman knowing what had happened to her came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told them the whole truth. Anyone recognize that story? And has that ever happened to anyone? You're terrified for whatever reason of your condition or situation. It might be whatever sickness that you're going through. It might be you know, financial challenges. It might be terrified or scared because you don't already have plans for, for Mother's Day. You know, whatever the reason, you know, one place that you can go is the foot of the throne of grace in prayer. And this morning, I want you to remember that even when you fall at his feet, afraid or trembled, you leave feeling comforted, reassured by his grace and mercy, just like the lady in that scripture. In one of the most, I would say, popular biblical passages concerning Jesus' feet, anybody, all right, let me throw it out to you. Tell me a popular Bible verse that I have not referenced as yet that references Jesus' feet. I just want to raise hand. All right, I hear Karen. Centurion. All right, not that one, but yes. A popular. Mary Magdalene washing his feet. That is popular, but not the one that I have. So one more. It's two ladies. 
Huh? Uh, what? Yeah, so beautiful are the feet that share the gospel, but not there yet. I'll reference that after. The one I'm referring to right now, very popular passage, was Mary and Martha. See, so when I say yes, no, I'm ask, and oh, you hear the chorus of yes. All right, so it's a popular Bible passage of Mary. Okay. No, man, I wouldn't do that to you. I wasn't asking verbatim. So it was about Mary and Martha at Jesus' feet. Where Mary famously sat at his feet while her sister Martha worked. And since that story is so popular, again, you know, I won't have to go into it, but I will extract three advantages of being at Jesus' feet. One, it allows us to hear from God first. Sitting here at his feet demonstrated that she wanted to learn from Jesus. The one thing Martha needed was to seize all her activities and sit at Jesus' feet and hear his word. That was the better part. The most important thing, to be in a relationship with him and to hear from him. In order to love Jesus, we must listen to his words and hear in his words comes before doing. And at times we can be guilty of that, just being busy, up and down, you know, trying to get things in order, but not truly listening to God, listening to his words, listening to what Jesus has to say. So this morning I pray that, you know, we'll have that discernment to choose the better thing. Secondly, being at Jesus' feet, we recognize who he is. The, the Samaritan leper falls at Jesus' feet in gratitude after Jesus heals him. In many instances, we encounter Mary, we find her at the feet of Jesus. Not only where I reference, but also in John 11. There she says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Immediately she falls at his feet, even though she does not confess the hope as Martha, later in John 12, we find Mary anointing Jesus' feet. Being at Jesus' feet represents an act of worship, giving him the same honor reserved for God. And it is also an open acknowledgement that a person recognizes who Jesus is and that there is something special about him. Thirdly, being at his feet shows a level of trust. Not only does being at Jesus' feet show that we acknowledge who he is, but it also demonstrates a sense of trust. And again, you know, Khalil demonstrated this morning, it's a sense of trust. And as mothers, you would know when a child is at your foot, it's because of some level of comfort, trust. They know that they are safe when they're in your presence. And although Mary didn't make the same declaration of faith that Martha did in John 11, the fact that she fell at Jesus' feet would have had a similar effect. It would also show that she trusted Jesus would be able to work in the situation even though Lazarus was dead. This concept of being on someone's feet when you're afraid to gain knowledge, to feel comforted, is not unique just to those biblical stories as I've mentioned and illustrated with mothers experiencing that with a young child, grandchild, or a ward. However, what does that mean that we have beautiful feet? Earlier I said that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So on this Sunday in Easter, this morning I'm here to draw into sharp focus the standard of what beautiful feet in the eyes of God, the true beholder, really means. And it was referenced by her sister earlier. In Isaiah 52 verse 7 it reads, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, a message so funda foundational and fundamental that it was also referenced in the New Testament in Romans. It is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Jesus' entire life was about ministry. 
He traveled wherever his beautiful feet took him to promote peace, heal the sick, restore the blind, deaf, and cripple. Interestingly, he used his beautiful feet to put others back on their beautiful feet. Because those whose lives he transformed by his presence, by his touch, by his word, could not control themselves, but in giving witness to the wonderful things that he has done in their lives on earth. People with beautiful feet have the same utterance of Peter and John when they answered, for we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. Mary Magdalene told the disciples as well, I have seen the Lord. The men from Emmaus, and again, we have gone through the Easter story. They returned from Jerusalem to share the good news. The disciples told Thomas, we have seen the Lord. Peter and John who saw the empty tomb, they couldn't keep silent. They also shared the news with others. Paul met the risen Lord on the Marcus Road. He shared the good news with everybody. Jews and Gentiles. And it happens in this very congregation as well. Closer to home, I want to recognize, you know, the beautiful feet of, you know, some of the mothers. And I won't get in trouble by calling any names, but I am sure that, you know, you also have been spreading the word, having that encounter with Jesus, not just stopping here, but spreading the good news to others. Would it be at a funeral settings, you know yourself, there are some members of church who have been to almost, you know, most of the funerals or supporting a grieving brother or sister, and that in itself is ministry, that is spreading the good news that is being there for our church members in a time of grief. You know, some might even make phone calls. Anybody make phone calls to church members we haven't seen in a while that also is ministry and it's using your beautiful feet you might not be as young as some of the others anymore but even from home you know just picking up that phone you know the phone will do the walking for you as you minister to others and a pet peeve of mine <laughs> and an indictment on the church is that at times we remember people by where they sit. And that reflects that those feet have been planted in church. So if you remember that, all right, yes, man, Kemari sits at the back row, for example, that shouldn't just be what you remember Kemar for. That shows that the feet have been planted. I want us to be remembered and from this Sunday onwards, and I'm sure some of you are already doing it, you know, be remembered as the person who leads the ushering ministry, and the ushers have done a wonderful job. Give a round of applause to the ushers. It was a wonderful <laughs> gift at the entry there. I had to pause and take a picture. That is ministry. You know, be known for the person who does the choir ministry. You know, we have the junior choir here in the back, etc., etc. Don't be known and don't remember people solely by where they sit. Christ, our good shepherd, and during this Easter, Christ, our good shepherd, his feet stayed still on the cross so that ours wouldn't be. We may say we are thankful for his sacrifice, but is that reflected in our actions? The reality is that we all have been commissioned and sent out in the world to proclaim the good news of God's love and saving grace. Who are you sharing your gospel with? This morning, this Sunday, this Easter onwards, friends, I encourage you to go forth and spread the good news and show your beautiful feet. Amen. <laughs>